good morning dear students so today we are going to discuss a new topic that's about machine tools and we will discuss mainly the lathe so the objective of this session is to have a brief introduction about machine tools then discuss different parts of lathe and also to illustrate different operations that can be carried out in lathe so this is the objective of today's class so what is a machine tool so have you have any idea about a machine tool so you might have heard the name machine which is used to uh, dif uh, use for an object or a device that produce some work with the help of some energy but what do you mean by machine tool so to understand more about machine tool just consider this you might have used this most oftenly a sharpener and a pencil so what is we are doing is with the help of this tool inside the sharpener we are changing the shape of the pencil so in another way another perspective we can say like that so the same thing is doing in machine tool so in, instead of pencil you have your work piece which made of mild steel or some other metal and instead of this sharpener you have your machine tool so instead of sharpener you have a blade so every machine tool you have you might you have to use a cutting tool so simply a machine tool is a machine that imparts required shape and size to a workpiece by removing the metal and in the form of metal chips so similar to the pencil where you have these chips forming the pencil chips in machine tool in every machine tool you have to remove the metal in the form of metal chips so it is almost analogous to this then every machine tool is a power driven machine used for metal cutting so you require some power so why you require some power for machine tool because to remove the metal in the form of chips or here also you have to obtain a relative motion so in this case if you want to remove this chips or you want to cut the pencil either you have to rotate the pencil keep the sharpener stationary or you have to rotate the sharpener keeping the pencil stationary so that means a relative motion a rotation is necessary for removing these chips so similar to here also if you want to remove the metal in the form of chips you have to obtain a rotation either to the work piece or to the this cutting tool or in some case you have to move the both so that is why you require a power for this rotation and in a machine tool a sharp cutting tool harder than the work piece is used which applies a shear load on the work piece so the principle is every work machine tool use a cutting tool which is very very hard so normally high speed steel is used which is a very hard material than the work piece the work piece will be mostly mild steel and this cutting tool applies a shear load on the work piece and when this load is greater than the ultimate shear strength so, so you know every material have an ultimate shear strength so if you reach the applied load reach that ultimate shear strength it will break or it will rupture so similar thing happens here when the load is greater than ultimate shear strength of the material localized failure will happen and the material will be removed in the form of chips so that is the principle behind this every machine tool so to perform this metal cutting machine tool must it should have two condition the first one is it should hold the work piece and cutting tool tightly so in this case also we want to remove this pencil chips you have to hold both tightly otherwise this will not happen you have to hold the pencil as well as this sharpener so similarly a machine tool must tightly hold the work piece and cutting tool 
and it should provide a cutting motion to either the tool or the workpiece and feed this motion to other one so that is a relative motion and rotation that should happen between these two so this is a machine tool so you can remember this example a simple example for understanding more about machine tools now what are the commonly used machine tools in industry and manufacturing first one is lathe itself so lathe is the most commonly used machine tool then we have different milling machines horizontal milling machine vertical milling machine can be used for cutting gears then we have another machine tool on shaper it's used to produce flat surface only another one is a slotting machine for slotting keyways etc you can use a slotting machine or a slotter then drilling machine you can use a drilling machine so number of machine tools are used for obtaining different applications and in this we will only focus on lathe so this is a typical lathe so you can see here it is a very large machinery and have different parts so each part have different function and this lathe this type of lathe was first invented by henry maudsley in the 18th century so it was widely used after the industry during the industrial revolution this lathe was widely used for obtaining different machine parts so nowadays we have different lathes starting from this engine lathe then up to cnc lathe etc so next we will see what are the parts of this lathe and their function let's see what are the major parts of the lathe with the help of this figure so already the parts are marked in this the first part and the most basic part is the lathe bed so you can see here it is marked here this is the lathe bed this horizontal portion so it is the body structure so lathe bed is the basic body structure on which the entire lathe is mounted and different parts like headstock tailstock carriage etc are mounted on it and it is made of a single piece of casting made of cast iron so this is a made of casting and the material is cast iron and the both side the bed is supported by two legs so these are the legs used to support the bed this is one leg this is another leg and the bed provides the required strength and rigidity to the machine so this is high speed machinery we are using a, also a very high force to cut this so vibration etc will happen so this bed provides this required strength and rigidity to the machine then another important part is head stock so you can see here this is head stock in the left side left side of the bed you can see a block like this this is known as a head stock and it is on the left side and permanently secured there so the head stock you cannot move the head stock to and fro it is fixed there and the main function of head stock is you require power so the power from the motor to different parts such as lead screw so you can see here is screw like shaft here known as lead screw marked here similarly spindle this rotating shaft is the spindle except are transmitted through head stock so different motion is transmitted mainly through head stock so we will have a motor a basic prime mover inside or near this head stock and this one is known as a chuck the rotating you can see here one part is rotating which will be holding the workpiece so here you can see this is our cylindrical workpiece so this is known as the workpiece holding device is known as a chuck and it is mounted on a hollow shaft on the head stock so here at the end of this head stock we have a hollow shaft which is known as a spindle so when the spindle rotates this chuck will also rotate and already the workpiece will be tightly held between the jaws of the chuck 
Oh, it's the end. Finally, the workpiece will also rotate like this. So this is another sub part in the headstock. It's known as a chuck. You can use a three jaw chuck, four jaw chuck, etc. Number of types of chucks are there. And to enable different speed of for tool and workpiece for different operation, a gear train is used, which is located inside the headstock. So that is another function of headstock. So if you disassemble this headstock inside the headstock you can see a number of gear trains so already we have studied gear trains and their application and you might have remember most of the application it is mainly applied in a lathe so we are using a number of number of gear trains are used why we are using gear in lathe because different cutting operations require different speed some operation requires very fast rotation, some require less rotation. So this we can change with the help of this gear. And these gears are changed by lever on the headstock. So you can see here a number of levers are there, mainly two, minimum of two lever will be there. So if you change this lever from one position to other, from A to B, A to C, etc. You can change the speed of this spindle, etc. So this is a function of headstock. Now we have another important part that is tail stock. So in the right side of the lathe bed you can see here we have a tail stock here mounted in the right end of the bench. And another difference between this headstock and tail stock is headstock is permanently fixed here but the tail stock you can see here it can move through these guideways. So this is a guideway provided on the lathe bed. So you can move this to and fro along these guideways and you can clamp it one place at a particular convenient position. So that is the important difference between tail stock and edge stock. And what is function of tail stock? It is generally used to support longer workpiece. Suppose you have in this figure you have only a small workpiece, but if you have a very lengthy workpiece like this, you have to support it the other end also. Then that is done with the help of this tail stock. So that is a major function of tail stock to support a very lengthy workpiece. You can use this tail stock. And also it is used in different operations like drilling, reaming, etc. And it is also known as so the tail stock is also used for holding the workforce operation like drilling, reaming, etc. This is also known as a dead center. Why dead tail stock is dead center? Because it is not rotating. So we call, may we call it as also a dead center. Then the most important part is the central part. This one, this entire part is known as a carriage. So our cutting tool will be on this carriage. And this carriage we can see it can move parallel to the lathe axis. So this is the lathe axis, the x axis. So you can see here the carriage by rotating this hand wheel, you can move this carriage to and from along this guideways. So it can move parallel to the lathe axis. And on this carriage we have different parts as numerous small small parts are assembled on this carriage like saddle, cross slide, tool post, compound rust, etc. So if you can see some of the parts are marked in this tool post, cross slide, this is top slide is also known as cross slide, then saddle is here. So like that a number of small small components are mounted one over the other in this carriage. This lower part of this carriage is also known as upper. Then just above the apron we have cross slide. So you can see here this mark here cross slide is marked here. This is known as a cross slide. So that can move perpendicular to the lathe axis. So you can see two hand wheels is there. One is a larger hand wheel here. So that is used for this x direction motion. So that this entire carriage can move to and fro through this lathe guideways. And just above that we have a cross slide. And this cross slide can move perpendicular to this plate, this perpendicular to the lathe axis, and is done with the help of this small hand wheel. 
and above the cross slide we have compound slide so this top slide this is a compound slide and that can rotate by chain this lever if you disengage this lever it can change the angle to this cross compound slide so that can be used in some of the operations and finally at the most top of this carriage you have the tool post so this is a tool post which will be holding your work piece so you can see in this figure this is your work piece a single point cutting tool so the work piece is holding with the help of this nuts in the tool post so this is about carriage so you have different motion available with the help of this carriage you can move it lengthwise parallel to the lathe axis with the help of this hand wheel then you can move perpendicular with the help of this hand wheel then with the help of this lever you can change the angle also so like that we have different parts for cutting tool movement on this carriage then another part we have to discuss is lead screw you can see a threaded screw here and that is used only for thread cutting operations what is thread cutting you get seen the thread internal thread external thread only nut bolt etc so that is can be cut with the help of this lead screw the rotation of lead screw is used to move the tool along the workpiece to produce the required screw thread so this is can be used with the help of lead screw so this is a major part so we have a number of small small part but we are discussing only the major part of lathe that is first one was lathe to bed then we have edge stock and then tail stock then on that stock we have a chuck and on the carriage we have a number of parts like cross slide compound slide tool post etc so this are the and we have a lead screw and this is what this one is a feed shaft shaft through which we are feeding the cutting tool we have this another shaft known as feed shaft so these are the different parts of a lathe now as he said we have three types of feed mechanism possible what are the three types of feed mechanism so what do you mean by feed feed is just the movement of tool related to the workpiece so if your cutting tool is moving related to the workpiece which is known as a feed the following three types of feed are possible to the lathe first one is the longitudinal feed so what do you mean by longitudinal feed the cutting tool is moving parallel to the axis of rotation of workpiece so with the help of this hand wheel we can use this or you can apply the longitudinal feed and another one is cross feed so cross feed is the tool is moving perpendicular to the axis of rotation of workpiece so that is this small hand wheel it can move perpendicular to this plane and finally you have the angular feed in angular feed the cutting tool is moving at an angle to the axis of rotation work piece so that is also with the help of this hand wheel but you have to change the angle with the help of this lever so an angle is marked on this compound rust on top slide so you can release this lever and you can engage it in the desired angle and if you feed with the, that in that angle it will be an angular feed so these three types of feed are possible so now we will discuss some of the basic operations of lathe so youtube we have different animation and real videos that will help to understand the part of lathe so this is a very useful animation video which is very helpful in understanding the parts of lathe so let's see what are the parts of lathe one by one it is shown in this video so this is starting from the bottom we have two legs so already we have discussed lathe bed is supported by two legs so these are two legs on which we have the central part the lathe bed which is a single casting support the lathe and left side we have edge stock right side we will have tail stock so before that we have a feed shaft 
for feed giving feed to the cutting tool and this is a lead screw a threaded shaft another threaded shaft which is used only for thread cutting operation and at the center we have very important part that is carriage so this central part is known as carriage and on the carriage we have a half traversing wheel hand wheel which is used for giving the longitudinal feed to the carriage to and from motion to the carriage and this is a lever half nut lever which will be engaged only in thread cutting operation so if you engage this lever this carriage will move through the lead screw then above this we have a cross slide the cross slide can move perpendicular with the help of this hand wheel and above cross slide we have a compound rust which can be angled inclined compound rust and left side we have edge stock already viscous inside we have a gearbox motor etc and this is the chuck used for holding the workpiece this is the axis of this lathe and here we have the tool post which will be used for holding the cutting tool and right side we have a tail stock the end of this tail stock is known as dead center moving the tail stock to and fro through this rack or guideways so this is the overall part of a lathe already we have discussed different parts so now move on to the different lathe operations what are the different operations that can be carried out on lathe we will discuss quickly the first operation we are going to discuss is facing so let's see what is a facing operation is so this is facing so you can see this is your cutting tool and you are feeding perpendicular to the workpiece through this end so that is known as facing so like this you will be feeding the cutting tool through this end face in a perpendicular direction to the axis so by doing this you can reduce the length of the workpiece and also you will get a smooth smooth surface flat surface on one end so facing is the process of removing metal from the end of a workpiece to produce a flat surface this operation involves feeding the tool perpendicular to the axis of rotation workpiece so the workpiece will be moving perpendicular to the axis of the rotation the most another most commonly used operation is turning so turning means as you will be moving the cutting tool longitudinal direction to obtain a cylindrical surface so like this you can remove the metal chips through longitudinal direction so turning is the removal of metal from the outer diameter of a rotating cylindrical workpiece and turning is used to reduce the diameter of workpiece usually obtain a specified dimension and to produce a smooth finish on the metal so if you want to reduce the diameter suppose you have a 50 mm dia you want to reduce it to 45 you can give use turning so you can adjust like that and you can reduce the diameter by moving the cutting tool longitudinally so that is known as turning and in this operation the workpiece is held either in the chuck or between the centers and a longitudinal feed is given to the tool either by hand or power so that is known as turning so here we are moving longitudinal direction the cutting tool is moving longitudinal facing we were moving perpendicular but in this we are moving longitudinal then what is step turning so step turning is suppose you want to obtain different diameter to different length like this you can call it as step turning so step turning is obtaining different diameters in the workpiece so steps are produced then another operation is taper turning so this is known as taper turning it's a conical surface you want to produce a conical surface 
in which the diameter get reduced in one direction like this so here we have a diameter d1 in this section but when you going up towards this length it's reduced to d2 so this is known as a taper turning so how will you obtain this taper turning so taper turning means produce a conical surface by gradual reduction in diameter from a cylindrical workpiece so for obtaining this operation or for a taper you can adopt five methods so total there are following methods are used for taper turning the first one is by using a form tool so instead of using a single point cutting tool which was used in normal turning operation you have to use a form tool like this a special tool with a particular angle of inclination so that you can get this angle and that is known as by using a form tool method and another method is by tail stroke shaft over so normal turning the tail stroke axis and this workpiece axis will coincide but if you want a taper you can change the axis of this workpiece to an inclination to the tail stroke angle then if you feed that with a single point cutting tool itself you will get a taper turning so that is known as a tail stroke set over method so tail stroke set over method we will incline this axis of shaft with respect to the axis of the tail stroke and we will give the normal feed as such and this is the most common use method for taper turning that is swiveling the compound rest so already we are told compound rest is the part on which the tool post is mounted and we can make an angle to the compound rest so by loosening the nut and you can give an angle a dial is marked just below the compound rest angle is marked and you can give that particular angle you required and if you give that feed in that angle you will get a taper so that is known as most commonly used method that is swiveling the compound rest and also you can get a taper by fitting a taper turning attachment in the lathe and give feed and you can also obtain taper by combination of longitudinal cross feed but this is very difficult to attain a very good training is required so normally we will use third method or and our first method mostly so that is known as taper turning then what is thread cutting so if you want a thread like this to obtain a thread like this you can use your lathe for that you can use your lead screw the lead purpose of lead screw itself is for to use it in thread cutting operation so for that you have to be very careful you have to match the pitch of this required thread with the movement of the lead screw the pitch is known as the distance between any edges and this major diameters of the thread so that is known as a pitch you can see here in this figure it is marked so like this you can obtain a thread in the metal external or internal with the help of a lathe so thread cutting is a lathe operation used for creating internal and external threads with the help of a single point tool so in this operation the workpiece is held in a chuck or between the cylinders and the threading tool is feed longitudinally to the revolving work and for this you have to engage that half nut shown in that part so engage that half nut and give the movement lead screw movement to the cutting tool so if you engage the half nut the lead screw movement will be given to the cutting tool and you can obtain a thread and the longitudinal feed must be equal to the pitch of the thread to be cut so that movement you can change movement of the lead screw the speed etc you can change which must be matched with the pitch of the required thread and another operation is drilling so you can use a drilling machine for drilling a portable drilling machine most of you have used 
but in the lathe also you can carry out drilling so what is drilling as drilling means making a cylindrical hole like this through the one face of your workpiece so you can see here so this is a drill bit is used is known as a drill bit this tool so drilling is the operation of producing a cylindrical hole in the workpiece and before you drill into the end of workpiece you should first face the end so before drilling you are, you should do facing because already i discussed the first operation is facing for obtaining a smooth surface this end you should do the facing first then that drill bit you can move connect this drill bit in the tail stock and this you can move through this direction according to the length of the hole required so the next step is to start the drill hole using the central drill so like that you can obtain a hole in the surface of the metal piece work piece then another oper similar operation is boring so what is boring so if you want to enlarge a already hole drilled hole you which is known as boring so like this so in this you have already obtained a hole with the help of this drill bit and you have removed that drill bit and you want to increase the diameter of the hole like this you can use a boring tool so the boring tool is placed in the tool post not in the tail stock the boring tool is mostly hold using the tool post and you can give the feed to increase the diameter so this is a shape of a boring tool so boring is the operation of enlarging a drilled hole and it is used when the correct size drill is not available and here the workpiece is held in a chuck or face plate and the boring tool of required is fitted on the tool post and fed in to enlarge the hole so just remember in drilling the drill bit we are placing in tail stock and we will give feed in that direction but in boring it is a very large tool so it we will place it in a tool post itself and give the required feed then what is reaming so this is reaming this these three are almost same reaming means if we want to obtain a good surface finish hole you can use reaming so reaming is the operation which usually followed by drilling and boring in case this holes required a very good surface finish and dimension accuracy you will use reaming so first you will drill a hole then you will bore that hole to increase the size then you want to increase the surface finish of that hole you will use reaming and the tool used this known as a reamer which has multiple cutting edges and the reamer is held in a tail stock spindle either direct or through a drill chuck and the work is evolved at a very low speed so the last operation we are going to discuss is knurling so what is knurling so knurling is with the help of a cutting tool like this a diamond finish is obtained on the work piece so here you can see the surface is roughened so it's an operation of embossing a diamond shaped pattern on the surface of the work piece the purpose of knurling is to provide an effective gripping surface on the work piece to prevent it from slipping when operated by hand so for example if you are using a screw driver its surface the holding surface should be rough so as you can grip it very good so that is known as knurling and knurling tool is different from other tools so knurling tool consists of a two or more hardened steel rollers you can see a rollers like this which have a diamond patches on the surface so diamond pattern is on the surface these patterns are formed on the surface of the work piece 
by pressing the nailing tool against the workpiece. So you can press this this roller tool against the rotating workpiece so that you will get the good surface roughness on the workpiece. So that is about nailing. So with this we are stopping these basic operations.